Welcome everyone. My name is Dan Piedra. I'm Assistant Director at McMaster University Continuing Education and it's my pleasure today to join you to share with you uh, some work that we've done over the fall of 2019 in piloting micro-credentials. My presentation today is entitled Exploring the Perceived Value of an Open Digital Badge for Virtual Collaboration. We had an opportunity to perform a pilot back in the fall of 2019 using open digital badges and assessing a virtual collaboration skill. I'd like to share the results of that with you and take you through some of the information that we've put together. So first of all, this presentation will give you an overview of how McMaster University implemented an open digital badging model to validate a soft skill within an experiential learning undergraduate level course. The pilot itself involved students completing a corporate project and were provided with an opportunity to obtain an open digital badge validating their mastery in virtual collaboration. There was a follow-up survey provided which I will share the data for uh, at the end of the course and six months following the end of the course. As we know there's a number of di different types of uh, models implemented for digital badges. One such model is what I would call a standalone recognition of set skills or knowledge area. This is where a specific uh, skill set or uh, something very finite in a very particular career focus is often assessed. A credential is often granted by the academic institution or by another training body and multiple badges may often be stacked towards a broader credential or a higher level of a badge. A good example of that is IBM's multiple levels of badges. And you can see here through this graphic that uh, they have different levels that go from a very basic knowledge, uh, what they call an explorer, to the excellence level, uh, deep understanding of highly complex subjects. Another model for open digital badges is embedding them within a broader academic program. In this particular model, specific skill is recognized within the context of a broader program. It could be a degree, it could be a diploma, or a certificate. It may be related to a specific core skill within the subject of study or a transversal or soft skill. Now, Some of you may have seen this graphic the T-shaped graduate, which outlines how the true graduate is not just an individual with depth of learning in their field, but also should be also equipped with cross-domain skills and attitudes. And the research really does show that this knowledge of cross-domain skills and attitudes, what we would often refer to as soft skills, are just as important, if not more important sometimes, in being able to land jobs and being able to progress through one's career. So it was our intention then to actually measure a soft skill within a course experience and the soft skill that we chose was virtual collaboration, a skill set that students would have to demonstrate within their experiential learning course. I'll give you a little bit of background as to the course itself. First of all the pilot centered around the partnership between McMaster University continuing education and Ripen networks. Some of you are familiar with Ripen's model for experiential learning. In fact, some of you probably use it. We've been working with Ripen now for about three years and we found their service to be a wonderful opportunity for students to be able to delve into uh, corporate experiential learning, which they would not have had in any other way. So the experiential learning design in HRM 897, Talent Acquisition, a fall 2019 core course in the Human Resources Management Diploma Program was the setting for this particular pilot. Students demonstrate knowledge and mastery of skills within the course while working collaboratively in virtual teams on real business projects. The projects are provided by a corporate partner who also liaises with students, providing coaching, clarification on the project, additional information or resources. The students provided with an opportunity to acquire an open digital badge validating their mastery in virtual collaboration. So uh, alongside the opportunity to complete their course 
and do their coursework and their project, they were given an opportunity to complete or to be assessed for and validate their virtual collaboration skills. A little bit about the student population. 63% of the students are looking to advance and grow within their chosen profession. The course itself being in the Human Resources Management Diploma Program, most of the students are obviously working within uh, the Human Resources area or trying to get into that area. 25% are looking for the Canadian Human Resources Professional, or CHRP, or the Canadian Human Resources Leader, CHRL designations. And 18% are on a new path, looking for the program to open up new employment opportunities. In terms of the demographic profile, the majority of the students are Generation X and Generation Y, with the former being 41% and the latter being 58% of the program's total student population. 75% of the students in this program are female. So the experiential learning uh, opportunity allowed students to be provided with an overview of the process. The completion of the work involved in acquiring the badge was also laid out for the students in detail. They were uh, involved in completing a peer evaluation midway through the group project and the self-reflection assignment or peer evaluation completed at the end of a group project. The successful completion of these items constituted the required work towards receiving the McMaster University Ripen Open Digital Badge for virtual collaboration. This was optional, I should mention, so students did not have to complete it, but if they chose to do it, they had to do the additional work in order to be considered for the virtual collaboration badge. The badge itself was issued through CanCred Factory. In terms of the sample size, two sections of HRM 897 Talent Acquisition were offered in the fall 2019. Uh, an online section which had 55 students and a traditional in-person delivery or classroom uh, had 11 students enrolled. In the online offering, 53 of the 55 students were awarded the badge and in the classroom or traditional in-person delivery, 9 of the 11 enrolled in the in-person delivery were awarded the badge. So as I said, we conducted a survey at the end of the course. Students who were successful in achieving the virtual collaboration digital badge were surveyed and asked to provide their opinion on the experience, the perceived value of the badge, and future plans. So here's the results from that particular survey. Question number one asked them, uh, prior to taking HRM 897, were you familiar with credentials like this? 20 of the 23 respondents told us they were not familiar with credentials like this, digital badges. The second question asked, have you received a digital badge before? And again, 22 of the 23 had not. So this was not a surprise to us. Right now we expect coming into an experience like this, most individuals, most students have probably not experienced much in the way of open digital badges. But I would expect that that number or the familiarity with the concept will probably increase over time. Question number three, how do you plan to use your badge in the future? Check all that apply. So they were able to check off more than one. And as you can see, the most common responses would be responses that we would expect to see. Uh, I will post the badge on my LinkedIn profile. I'll reference it in my resume. And I will include it when applying for jobs. So those are you know, perfect responses. Those are exactly the kinds of things that we want to see students do with their digital badges. That is theoretically the intention of a digital badge, is to be able to share it for those purposes. Question number four asks, how much of an impact do you think this badge will have on your career path? And at this point, most said some impact or moderate impact. So again, you know, not knowing exactly what you have when you first get something that you've never had before, uh, this question may be a little bit unfair, but clearly I think you know, that the, the students at this point who had been successful in acquiring the badge felt that there would be some moderate impact or some impact in having the badge. Question number five asked him if you were offered another opportunity to earn a digital badge for skill or achievement, would you pursue it? And again, it's good to see that after having gone through one experience uh, of a digital badge that they, the majority would certainly pursue other opportunities for like badges. 
Question number six was optional. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share about your experience earning this digital badge? We only had two responses, but I think they're quite significant. Uh, the first one says, I think it depends on how many other people know about digital badges too. And that's a very important concept there, the idea that how much knowledge uh, and familiarity is there with digital badges outside of a classroom. The other comment uh, was, I want to flaunt and grab attention, but I'm not sure how much people are aware of this badge. I would suggest that there should be enough advertising of this badge so it reaches to people uh, to be aware and its importance. So again, the same, same thought there, right, about how many people know about this. Now that I have this, uh, will, will anyone really know what this means? So I think those are important questions uh, to consider. So following uh, that experience, we waited a bit, and then six months following the completion of the course, uh, we were very interested in the opinion of those students who had earned the virtual collaboration badge six months after the experience. Wondering, uh, of particular interest for us was, you know, how the badge might have been used. Uh, did they use it for career-related activity? Uh, was it of any value to them? Uh, those are some of the questions that were on, you know, sort of our mind. So with this in mind, uh, a second survey was put together and conducted in June of 2020. Unfortunately, we only had 10 respondents. It wasn't completely a surprise to us. Uh, you know, six months after an experience, you certainly would expect the participation rate of a survey to drop off. But we did get 10 respondents, and I think the responses are still quite uh, valuable. So here's the questions that we asked. The first question asked, indicate if you agree or disagree with the following statements about the value of a digital badge. Uh, three different parts to this question. The first one is earning digital badge or badges help me to better present myself and my skill to prospective employers. The second one, earning a digital badge was instrumental in helping me find a job or landing a promotion. And the third part was in general, digital badges are an effective way to communicate my experience and skills. In each case here, you have a lot of not sures. Four of the 10 respondents uh, and three in the last one part there weren't really sure. And uh, when you look at the actual split of the 10, it, it is actually quite scattered. Uh, the majority are either not sure or, in the case of the second part to the question there, uh, four of them not applicable, which for that particular part of the question tells me they probably weren't looking for work, uh, so they really had no need to use their badge for that purpose. But certainly a, a bit of uncertainty here in terms of this question as to the value uh, of the particular badge. The second question, how important are the following skills or competencies in your work? So we wanted to know if th three particular skills are still very important in their work. And the three skills uh, were communication within your current work, virtual collaboration within your current work, and problem solving within your current work. And you can see that in all three of those, uh, the majority of respondents said that, yes, those skills are either somewhat important or very important. Um, so certainly the, the value of, of recognizing those skills is probably still very important. Question number three, if you were offered another opportunity to earn a digital badge for a skill or achievement, would you pursue it? And we were happy to see that seven of the ten said that they would, that they would certainly consider it. Question number four, if you have any other comments or feedback, let us know. Nobody responded, so nothing to report at that point. So my concluding thoughts, despite the fact that our, our first survey had 23 respondents and our second survey had only 10, I think there's still some important um, concepts that came through loud and clear. Uh, despite the generally recognized advantages of digital badges, the study conducted within this article identified two points worth noting. While the value of virtual collaboration as a recognized skill set was never questioned, there is still a great deal of uncertainty as to what an open digital badge is and how it can be of benefit to individuals. And number two, there is generally support for the concept of the badge and the promise that comes with it. However, further education is needed as, students, as to how students can leverage their benefits. So I think in general what this tells us is there's still a lot of work here in terms of educating not just students, but the public and industry as to what these credentials are all about. We're still living in a 
world that generally still recognizes degrees, certificates, diplomas. Those are words that we've become very accustomed to. An open digital badge or an alternative digital credential is still very new. And I think there's a lot of opportunity here to still educate um, all three stakeholders. Um, and that includes obviously the students and the public and industry. And so moving forward, uh, I hope there's other projects like this that we can continue to learn from. McMaster University itself is still involved and will be involved in further pilots. We have a current pilot running right now uh, through the fall and into the winter that we will be able to report back on uh, next year at some point. And we hope to learn more from that experience as well as any others. And if you're interested in reaching out further questions or you want to work together on anything related to micro-credentials or open digital badges, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out. Thanks very much and I uh, hope we can connect at some point.